Direkt neben dem Haus des Kanzlers steht ein Einfamilienhaus. Directly next to the house of the. There is no of here, but the es is genitive, which you only need to recognize, never to use for a while. And this s confirms this, because some nouns take an extra s in genitive, the masculine and neuter ones. So, of the chancellor stands a one family, the n is just glue, house, one family house, which is a house for one family. That's really what it is, very literal. Stefan macht noch schnell Fotos vom Garten. Stefan makes noch schnell, noch is basically emphasizing the schnell, um, yeah, still fast, still quickly, doesn't, doesn't really work well. It's really just emphasis. Pictures, sorry for that, pictures vom Garten, vom is basically von dem, but whenever we can we shorten this. Garten, of the garden. So the only thing that's notable is we don't take pictures in German, we make them. Germans make pictures. It's kind of a creation, right? It's not that you take them, it's really you look, what do you want to make the picture of? Yeah, and Germans always say, oh, let me, let me make some pictures. Um, yeah, as you could just see spontaneously, I made that mistake. Während Simone zum Nachbarhaus geht. So Stefan is taking pictures of the garden. Während, remember that one? While. And während here, you can see there's two währends we have, but for now this one is uh, what we will focus on, uh, is a pusher. While Simone zu dem to the nach neighbor house goes to the house of the neighbor nachbarhaus germans can put that in one word Isn't that lovely so while simone to the neighbors goes and that's due to the während hat sich da gerade ein vorhang bewegt has itself there da is often da usually means there yeah um, if it's on its own. It could also mean here. So if someone is in the classroom, the teacher asks, Schmitz, you say, da, bin da, ich bin da, I'm here. So it can mean both, but most of the time it's there. So has there, just now, gerade, gerade could mean straightforward, but in a time sense it means just now, a vorhang, something that hangs in front. And that is, of course, a curtain. I never checked what curtain actually means or where it comes from. Maybe you can do that. So, Vorhang is something that hangs in front of the windows and therefore it's a curtain. Bewegt, well, bewegen comes from vegan, which means to weigh. So, somehow, things that move, maybe you can imagine if something moves, it's like weighing it. Yeah, or it's weighing in the wind. Um, so it's related to this bewegen, to weigh, and then you, you see. And the be is usually pointing at it's a direction involved. Yeah? Uh, we don't have wegen anymore, at least not as a verb. Uh, wegen today means because or due to. Uh, but it's not a short form of bewegen. So didn't there... Uh, I don't know, didn't the curtain there just move? And that should have been it. Oh, no, 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 no. Sie klingelt an der Tür. So an interesting word is klingeln. Uh, e, one of the few verbs that end in E-L-N instead of E-N or E. Yeah, E-N actually. EN is 99% of the verbs, but we have ELN and ERN. So klingeln, the specialty here is um, if I had ich, I would say ich klingel. Officially, I would write it klingle, like klingen almost. Uh, so because klingele, uh, that is not how we would say this. Yeah? It's simply not how Germans speak. So klingeln, and imagine someone is really clinging to your doorbell, because it means to ring. Yeah? She rings 
at the door at and you see the edge is almost here literally niemand macht auf uh, niemand is an interesting word aufmachen you remember auf is looks like a preposition and therefore cannot be one because it's at the end so aufmachen to make up or to make open and niemand means no or never man which means somebody yeah well no man but literally or never man niemand macht auf and she repeats the game yeah einmal one time so she rings once again and again nothing you remember nichts is short for nicht etwas not something but of course you would never write it nicht etwas you will always write nichts nothing so again wieder nichts and wieder you know from auf wiedersehen you must have heard this see you again yeah can also be used on its own as you could see here aber sie hätte schwören können let's do the second one dass da jemand hinter dem Fenster gestanden hat. Two sentences, and you see the comma separates them. Yeah? Hätte, können, hätte is conjunctive too, don't worry about it. Uh, could have, could have. Yeah? The, the could is actually here, this is can, uh, so it's a bit complicated in German. And schwören looks like English, uh, swear. Yeah? That's easy. She could have sworn that, there, remember that, jemand is the opposite of niemand, yeah, so some man, somebody, behind the window, stand, has, stood, has, so she could have sworn that someone stood behind the window, or, well, yeah, that's the best translation. Vorsichtig schaut sie sich um. We have umschauen again. Remember the schauen for Germans. It's not to show something. It's actually the opposite. It's to look at something. And um means around. Like we had um sieben Uhr. I mentioned that. Just in context with time, it usually means, usually means sharp. But here it is uh, look around. And vorsichtig, vor means in front. And sicht is like in English side. So she's looking in front. And when you do that, you're being very careful. So vorsichtig means carefully. She's looking around. And again, our friend niemand, no man, never man, uh, to see. Nobody inside. Yeah, nobody to see. And that was lesson 11. Hope you liked it and learned a bit and see you in lesson 12.